my friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm back in the great cold city of Vienna and a lot of people requested a kind of a recap video of Leonidio of this awesome place. So let's do it. I think I will do a little bit of a recap like um, what are my favorite sectors, what are the favorite routes, how successful was it, uh, was it a good trip for me, bad trip for me, what was the, the downsides, the, the great times and all that stuff. So. For this purpose, I've um, created my little checklist. Here it is. So that I don't forget anything. And I think I'm gonna make it a little bit more cozy for me here. There we go. Oh, that's a bit low, huh? Camera down. All right, guys. So let's talk a little bit about Leonidio general structure of the area you know leonidio is enclosed by mountains you know in the north and in the on the east you've got the ocean you know the sea the mediterranean sea and on the west you've got even more mountains and that's the general setting of this awesome village you know you have you have kind of all landscapes mixed together you've got these um, plantages of oranges and olive trees then you got the sea the vegetable gardens in the east close to the sea huge mountains with some multi pitches even and then of course smaller sectors with um, not so high rock but still amazing to climb it's all limestone with a lot of tufas and as i said you've got you don't have really one huge sector you know where all the roots are one huge wall Rather, you've got a lot, a lot, a lot of different sectors, you know, a lot of different tiny walls with different styles of climbing, different approaches, different height of the roots, different difficulty of the climbing in general, um, different friendliness of the grading, so to say. So you've got a lot of variety there. And in fact, there are so many sectors that I haven't even been uh, at all of them during over two months of climbing. You know, I've, uh, when I counted the right, I was at 15 sectors. And this, that's not even half of all the sectors that are there. You know, I think there are, at the moment, there are 40 sectors and there are still new sectors developed all the time. So yeah, let's see how this area looks like in two, three years, you know. Now, of course, I don't have time to explain all the different sectors I've been to in detail, but I've made a lot of videos there and I think I featured eight of the 15 sectors that I've been to in at least one video. If you like, of course, go ahead and check the videos out and you get a lot of good impressions what the sectors look like and you know what the general feeling is and stuff like that now if you're interested in further information i would recommend you to check out the website climbingleonidio.com where they have pretty good topo actually i mean not like a topo but it's a pretty good description of all the sectors don't forget of course if you decide to go there get their really nice made really well made guidebook it's a really nice guidebook a lot of nice pictures in it and detailed descriptions of the sectors and of the approaches and exposure and stuff like that. So yeah, that's really a nice investment and I think it supports the local community quite a lot. So I thought what I will do is I will pick four of the 15 sectors that I've been to and describe them in a little bit more detail. My four favorite sectors of those that I've been to. And first of course, I would like to start with the Twin Caves. I think the Twin Caves are by far the most popular sector of Leonidio for a number of reasons. First of all, you've got a great variety of different uh, difficulties to climb there. You know, there is something I think from 7A, uh, from, from 6A up to 8B plus and still unclimbed projects as well. But I don't know how hard they are, you know. So I say 6A to 8B plus. And you've got also a lot of different styles. You know, the, the, the easier routes are mostly like vertical climbing, but not only that, you've got also a little bit like little overhangs and slabs and stuff like that. The harder routes are ranging from vertical climbing, slightly overhanging, uh, to super steep roof climbing, you know, really powerful moves and a lot of too fast and stuff like that. So yeah, I've got a lot of variety there. And another thing is that it's not far from the village. I think you've got a five minute ride with the car and then you've got a five minute hike up, you know, some kind of dirty way to the crag. And, you know, that's of course very attractive for a lot of climbers who maybe don't, they, maybe they don't have a car. By the way, if you want to be able to reach all the sectors in a reasonable amount of time, it would be very advisable to have a car down there. But back to the Twin Caves, what I also want to say is that there are generally a lot of routes in total, you know, it's not like there is 17C and 18A and 18B or stuff. I think there are even three 8Bs and 
two HB pluses and there are two seven C's and two seven C pluses from every grade almost you've got at least two different routes which is of course very attractive because then you are not finished if you've done the first one so if you're one of those knee pad tufa endurance climbers I think you're gonna like it a lot and you know the rock quality is also quite good a lot of really solid tufas and that's a lot of fun to climb on those I think when it comes to exposure the crack gets a lot of sun so it's probably not a summer crack I mean there is rarely a summer crack down there in Greece because it gets up to I don't know 40 degrees Celsius or something something like that so in the summer you will need a high sector really shady otherwise it's gonna be too hot and I think so it is in the twin caves it's definitely a winter sector you know in the winter when it was really cold close to five degrees or something and you got the sun in the back and a little bit of wind maybe that were top conditions you know and another thing i want to mention is when it rains a lot it tends to stay wet a long long time because it has so much too fast and when it comes through when the water comes through from above the crack tends to stay wet for a long time so that's it for the twin caves i think the next sector that i want to mention here is elona and you know what to say about elona it's just an amazing crag world class too for climbing if you like slightly overhanging pumpy endurance too for climbing i think you would enjoy elona definitely it's a huge crag it's very high i think up to 60 meters or something like that and so there are a lot of prolongations you know you've got a first pitch of uh, i don't know 25 meters or stuff like this and then they prolongated it i think at the moment there is some bolting going on there with another prolongation so it's gonna be really really cool there i think the rock quality is also quite nice you've got amazingly solid tufas there i really would have liked to climb more in elona unfortunately i don't had the uh, chance to do so because it was wet for a very very long time when i was there generally i would say in the win in the winter the uh, the crack tends to be wet for a long time because when the water comes through from above maybe it, it snows a little bit up there you know you have to know that elona sector is quite far away away from leonidio it's really like a 25 minute ride with the car up the valley you know you gain some altitude and yeah the, the, the advantage is that you have zero approach then so you basically step out of the car and you're in front of the wall which is quite nice of course the thing is elona is really high in altitude and you have to basically get a hot day you know when you get a hot day it's up there it's perfect then it's like i don't know 10 15 degrees maybe some wind and then you've got perfect conditions if it's a very cold day maybe even cloudy winter day then you're gonna freeze your ass off up there and it also because of that you know it stays wet for a long time the crack gets almost no sun in the winter only in the summer so if there is water coming through from above all the tufas are going to be wet and they're gonna stay wet for a long long time and this was the case in the winter when i was there uh, in the last two months you know it was just wet and it, it started to get dry when I left but yeah I really would have liked to try more routes there but unfortunately they were wet so I think when I go there in the next uh, autumn season maybe or even in the summer who knows I think it's gonna be better conditions for Elona and before I forget there's a really nice monastery up there that's definitely worth a visit I would say the third sector of my personal top four is Hada now Hada, that's a really special one, I think. It's not like Elona or Twin Case where you have a lot of routes, you know, on one place and you have a lot of choice, you know, when you do one eight eight and there are three other eight days that you can choose that you can choose from basically. In Hada there you've got a lot of variety regarding different grades as well. I think the easiest is something like 6A and the hardest is something like 6B plus uh, 8B plus and even uh, some open projects unclimbed projects so they by the way they look incredibly hard maybe some 9a stuff up there who knows but you don't have a lot of routes in total you know so if you do the only 8a of the crack then you're basically done with 8a's if you do the only 8b plus of the crack you're done with the 8b pluses i mean it's not that extreme but it's not like you've got millions of routes like in elona or in the twin caves what I like so much about this crag is that you have actually a little bit of approach, you know, you have to walk like 20, 25 minutes and it's a real adventure. You go through this always dry riverbed with lots of strange looking plants and these, uh, you know, strange looking rocks where, you know, normally is the water running through it and stuff. 
you really feel like this discovery dude, you know, walking down the valley and uh, making footsteps where never a human was before and stuff like that. I mean, of course, people were there before, but I mean, it feels like this because the, the, the plants are, are looking so special and everything. So it's definitely worth a visit just because of the approach, I think. 20, 25 minutes of hiking and you only have to do a five to 10 minutes ride from the village, you know, with the car. So it's definitely very, on the closer side to Leonidio from in regarding to compared to other sectors. The biggest advantage about Hada is that it's going to stay dry no matter how much it rains. It's really, I don't know, when I was there it rained a lot. It was a very wet winter according to the locals there and Hada was never wet. You know, the, the water just doesn't come through this big huge overhang. It's really a huge, huge overhang, looking really compact. Unfortunately, the, the rock quality is not that good, not as good as it looks, but it kind of holds the water inside. I don't know how, but the water doesn't come through. And you can even go there while it's raining. If you want to be protected from the rain, you know, then you, you basically can go there and enjoy the overhang and, you know, stay dry under the big overhang and stuff like that. Definitely a recommendation for wet days, for rainy days. The rock quality varies quite a lot, in my opinion. And the harder it gets in Hada, the more you have to pay attention, especially on the first few meters that you don't rip out some holes while clipping a draw. Unless this happens, it's not really dangerous or something. And I think especially on the easier routes, you know, the too fast stuff, because the easier route is more like tufas and stuff the harder roots is more like little uh, crimps and flakes you know which tend to come off quite easily if you know what i mean so on the easier routes it's not so much of a dangerous problem i would say but on the harder routes you know i had my scary moments so yeah definitely pay some attention and the fourth crag of my top four crags would be la maison de chevre now what to say about La Maison de Chèvre, it's just another very very nice crag, very nice setting in this kind of alpine environment, you've got a river down there, you know, when there's a lot of snow, a lot of rain, the river is also going to be, there's going to be some water. When I arrived at Leonidio in the first, uh, I don't know, at the end of December, there was no water in this river because it didn't snow, it hadn't snowed enough. The sector is not that big, you, again, you don't have a lot of number, a great number of routes in total, but you've got quite a variety of routes. I think you should be a little bit uh, stronger to, if you want to enjoy the crack fully. Um, I would recommend you climb at least 7B or 7B plus or something, then you can try a really nice 7A plus there and also 7B plus maybe a 7c which is another great route another 7a and it's also quite different from the other ones in style you know this one is more like shorter routes more bouldery routes more power endurance routes the routes are like 15 meters 10 meters or stuff like this you know and it's mostly easier climbing to a crux they've got a boulder and then it's over you know then you've got easier climbing to the top the rock quality is not bad i wouldn't say it's super good but yeah it's not bad there is uh, there are some quite solid tufas and interesting climbing a little bit of a mixture between tufa climbing and you know crimps and stuff like this the crag is also quite far away from leonidio i think 20 to 25 minutes ride with the car and then you've got another 15 minutes of approach of hike approach and as I said, through this awesome alpine setting. So for the colder days when it's cloudy and there's no sun and maybe, I don't know, 10 degrees or something in the winter, I wouldn't go exactly to, Les to La Maison de Chèvre because you really are going to freeze your ass off. It's the ideal day for a sunny winter day when you have no clouds and a clear sky, you know, cold, fresh air and then a lot of sunshine in your back, maybe a little bit of wind, perfect conditions there. And of course, if you want to go for the crazy hard stuff, La Maison de Chèvre contains the so far Soul 9A of Leonidio Capricorn. So if you want to try that one, have fun. So these were my personal top four sectors of Leonidio. I have to add here that all of these sectors, of course, harbor some, you know, harder stuff because I like to try harder stuff as well on my climbing holidays. So in case you want to go for something easier, there are also super nice sectors which contain easier stuff like, for example, Hot Rock or, or maybe Mars. You know, Hot Rock contains almost only easy stuff. There is 17B, I think, that's the hardest route. And Mars, you've got, yeah, up to 8A, roots up to 8A, and it's a really special crack, you know, crazy big tufas and stuff like this on an on a almost vertical wall, 
and super long routes as well. So if you like that, you maybe should check out Mars as well. You know, you should check out Mars just because of the craziness of the sector. It looks really surreal. So now I thought I'll pick the top five routes of all the routes that I've made there, you know, kind of one thing from every race.